Hey guys, Mike Fasile here, and in today's video, we are revealing how to sell on Amazon FBA, even as a complete beginner. I'm talking about with zero experience, more with that after the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Fiss here. Welcome to this video. Before we actually begin, I want to remind you that several spots have opened up for this week's free workshop, where it is the fastest and the easiest way to make money online. We literally have a 62-year-old grandmother with zero experience go from zero to $160,000 profit her first 90 days. Check it out in the free workshop below. Let's talk about Amazon because, you know, I got started in selling an Amazon. I think it was like 2012 and a lot of mistakes that I ended up making. Like I ended up losing like I think $20,000 in money and I don't wanna make you have the same mistakes. So remember, learn from me. So the first step is really becoming an Amazon seller. You just go to sellercentral.amazon.com and more than half the units sold on our store are from independent sellers like you and I. You could just sign up. The only thing is it's $39 a month plus selling fees. But here's the thing, before you actually go ahead and do this, it's good to actually have all of the things ready for things. Because what happened to me is I got so excited, I signed up for this and I was like, oh my God, let's go. But I really didn't start selling until three months later or six months later, or even nine months later because of all the things I had to worry about with like the waiting, the negotiating with suppliers and stuff like that. So the first step is actually the last step. Most people will actually sign up for this, but just like that, you're eating up $39 a month with selling fees. So we will just move that all the way to the end so that you could actually save more money. Now that we've gotten most people's first steps all the way to the end, let's talk about how to actually go ahead and source products. Now let's talk about Alibaba.com because this is where a lot of people end up sourcing their products. It's where I bought like literally a bunch of grill mats and barbecue gloves and dog leashes because that's what was what I was selling back in the day. Now. Alibaba is pretty interesting because you could just come in here and see all of the products that you could actually go ahead and sell. Actually, an idea that I would even like doing is going to their sister company, which is AliExpress, where you could actually just type in anything. For example, I was just I was selling grill mats and grill gloves at the time. If I just type in grill gloves, you'll see exactly what they're going ahead and selling for. You know, you have like 99 cents, you have three dollars, you have these ones for 85 cents. The craziest thing is you go and see them on Amazon these girl gloves and they're $27. Okay. So this was the opportunity that I saw at the time. Now it's probably not the case because it's super saturated. And then of course you would just pull it up on Alibaba as well. Grill gloves. Now the difference between Alibaba and AliExpress is AliExpress, you can literally buy one or two things. So it's maybe good if they have samples, right? So you don't just buy like 2000 orders of something and just send them to Amazon. The thing that you actually have to do on Alibaba though, is you have to negotiate. Now, this is something that Americans aren't really used to because you literally go to a store and you're like, how much does this cost? And they're like X amount of dollars. And you're like, okay. And you just buy without having to ask. Okay. That's not how it works here in Asia. All right. Here in Asia, it's still like the bartering system. You can literally go up to these people and just negotiate with them. Be like, hey guys, how much would it be if I got a hundred orders, 200 orders, 500 orders? What would be the deal that you'd actually be able to give me? Remember, you should also get them on Skype call. Because also when you get on Skype, this is where a lot of people and suppliers actually talk to their suppliers in China. You want to see how they communicate. Because if they suck at communicating with you before you actually bought inventory from them, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000 units of something, you are going to hate them when it comes to logistics of where's my shipping container? Where are the products? Why is this bad quality? Oh my God, this is low quality. Can you actually like send me another thing. Like luckily for me, I vetted so much different people when it came to this. Some people are complete scams. They're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna like treat you well. And a lot of these are also like, like same with how a lot of people wanna sell on Amazon. A lot of Chinese people are seeing a huge opportunity with Alibaba. They're like, oh my God, I just wanna like go in and, and do this. And sometimes you actually get dropship suppliers. So it's very, very crucial that you talk to them and you ask them certain questions when it comes to doing business with them. One thing that I also like doing when I have some type of business idea is I want to make sure that I want to get a sample from them. How does it look? Is it high quality? What was the shipping time like? Right? Because before you buy a bunch, you need to make sure it works really, really well in the beginning. You don't want to over risk yourself with that because each product is like, you have to really invest like a thousand, two thousand dollars when you really want to start really getting going. It's a lot of money for most people, right? which is why the product selection thing is the most important thing. So after the second step of really understanding how to utilize Alibaba, how to negotiate, maybe talk to some suppliers, you then want to make sure you go to step number three, and that's really double down on the product research. Now, the problem with most people is they don't do any product research. They just go buy 2000 units of something and they go and sell it. Like I did this 
Back in 2012, 2013, I bought like 2,000 dog leashes. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna get so rich with these dog leashes. No one ended up buying it. One thing that you could do is actually, if you have a product idea that you wanna sell on Amazon, I would go ahead and type it in, right? And once you type it in, I would pull up one of these listings, right? So let's, let's do this one. This was actually my competitor back in the day, and now they're still killing it, which is insane. It's 4,000 ratings, right? So what I would actually do is go to the reviews and see exactly where they are failing at. If they're failing at a lot of things and people have found it helpful, this is where you could actually go ahead and improve. So as I can see right here, five month update, I hardly ever use these now, and I've only kept these because they're useful for handling lids for steaming pots. As noted below, while they don't transfer heat right away, they absorb it pretty quickly during direct contact, and you just can't get them off quickly enough. Even running cold water on them doesn't cool them off quickly. Read the other reviews closely. It seems there is a trend where people post good reviews on the product for customer service by the seller when their whole separate review process for that, don't be misled. Heat bleeds through easily in places where the silicone is thin between the little fire symbol studs. When placed in direct contact with hot surfaces, this is a problem at the thumb joint. Another one here. These are rated for over 400 degrees. First time use moving oven rack at 350 and I started to feel the heat within a few seconds. Suddenly the glove became extremely hot and couldn't get the glove quick enough. It seems as though the glove stayed hot after dropping the rack and continued to burn my fingers. I don't understand all the positive reviews. They don't work for me. So just like that, that is a huge idea. Like if I just come in here and type in grill glove, silicone, cotton right? So they have like hot in insides. You would see something like this, grill gloves with hot selling silicone. You could see the solution for that, right? Look at this. It has cotton in the inside and silicone on the outside. And yet it's still a dollar per piece. The minimum order quantity, which is MOQ, you would have to just get 300, but you could even get less of an order if you really want to go and test it on AliExpress, right? Like I said, Alibaba is more for buying things in ridiculous amounts of bulk. You could just copy this exact same thing because this is their keyword research and just put it in in AliExpress and see what pops up. And as you can see, there's like multiple different styles and whatnot. The only difference though with AliExpress is it will be a little bit more expensive because Alibaba makes their money when people buy in bulk. Now that you've actually looked at the reviews and you're like, okay, I think this is gonna be fit. You maybe get like a small little order quantity to just test it out to see if it'll actually work. Next thing you wanna do is focus on creating your product listing. This thing, Right here, this title, this ridiculous long title, you can see these are all keywords. The pricing, because that's the most profitable they could actually go ahead and make it. When they were actually selling this, it was actually $14. So it's actually very interesting to get them up to $28. As well as all these descriptions where when people are searching on like Amazon, like how they're searching on Google, this is exactly what will end up popping up. So the problem with what I did is I did all of this by myself and I wasn't the expert and that's why I had a hard time and it even took me longer. Now, even before you get started with selling on Amazon, I would recommend this book, Who Not How, because this is a thing that I wish I had when I was selling on Amazon. Here was I, background dentistry, in biomedical sciences, had no idea how to run an online business. I didn't know how to do accounting, photography, search engine optimization. I had to do like product listing. I didn't know any of that, right? So this thing really taught me exactly how to find the who for that. Who can do this for really cheap, right? So if you could see this, you know, you, you go to Fiverr and the thing that you would actually need from here is like an image. The images are the most important thing. You're like, oh my God, how did they get fire on that and water on that? It looks ridiculous, right? If you go to Fiverr and type in Amazon product photography, you can find a bunch of cheap services that will actually do things starting at only $5. You could even go ahead, take some of the samples that you got from them, send it to these people, and they're gonna go ahead and do all of that for you. They're gonna send you high quality pictures. That way you don't actually have to do it yourself. And then if you wanna go even more to the next level, you have like these done for you services, studios in Canada, US and China, where the fact that it is in China, you could literally just ship the example with maybe the logo, you could put something interesting, especially when you work with Alibaba and you're like, hey guys, you know, I wanna get this color right here. Can you just tuck this out here? Um, and make sure that you take pictures of the inside kind of like this, send them just a bunch of examples. Your supplier from Alibaba could then just send the sample instead of you, who most likely is in the US, UK, or Canada, to the photography service, and then they could even do a little bit of checking to see if it's actually high quality for you. That number one saves you time, because to go from China all the way to the US takes a long ass time. That's why for you to get started in Amazon FBA, it literally can take anywhere from like three months all the way up to a year 
before you could actually make money with Amazon FBA, right? If you could just cut the time even in a fraction of time because you're sending it to someone literally in China, that is huge, right? And this is just AMZ one step. You could use them as a service. You could go ahead and book a call. The next thing that's also very important is Amazon FBA listing SEO. If you go to Upwork, you can literally find a bunch of people that have a really good job rate, right? $10,000 plus earned, 94% job success, but in Bangladesh, you could get them for $12 an hour. This one is 100% success, $4,000 earned, $11 per hour. And what you need this, which is what you're probably wondering, what's a listing SEO? When you go to a listing, all of this, right? This is exactly how people go ahead and find you. The insulated silicone oven mitts for grilling, forearm protection, waterproof, heat resistant grill gloves. And on top of that, writing all of these things. All of this is SEO, right? This is copy that ranks on the search engine optimization. It's kind of like this video ranking for Amazon FBA selling or something like that. That's how maybe you found me or maybe you didn't. Maybe you just came in somewhere else. But that is important because that is a skill that takes a long time to learn. Remember, this book talks about, ah, that's a girl glove. This book talks about who, not how. Instead of asking yourself, how can I actually get this done? Ask who can actually do this for me at a lower cost. Another thing that you also need is Amazon FBA PPC. When you launch things on Amazon, the thing that you also need is advertising because no one buys from people that literally have zero ratings, right? You need to have to, you know, get your credibility up there. That's why when we go in here, you see these things called sponsored. You can literally hire somebody to figure this out for you because that is another skill in itself. And I mean, this guy has earned over $600 plus. This one, $3,000 plus. He only charges $10 an hour, $9 an hour, $14 an hour. Man, that's how much I got paid when I was working as a summer camp counselor playing basketball and rock climbing with kids back when I was younger in high school. Now you're having, this is, a, this is normally like six figure job for a big corporation or company when you do it in the US. Now, if you go to Upwork, you can literally outsource it for even cheaper guys. And then when you've kind of figured out all of these, then you could actually really tackle and begin to tackle Amazon seller schedule guys. But if you guys want a faster way to make money online and you're like, this is all too complicated, make sure you check out the free workshop below because we literally have a woman that's 62 years of age that went from zero to 160 grand in 90 days pure profit without having to do any of this. You can check it out in the free workshop below. I'm really curious, comment below. I love Amazon FBA if you want more Amazon FBA tutorials. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you look at my podcast where I literally interview a bunch of people that are super successful here in Bali. You have this 11 year old that turned on $30 million. You have this guy that makes a million dollars per month profit. You have sexual transmutation, 1 billion at 22, as well as Mike Chang from Six Pack Shortcuts. Guys, love you guys. Take it easy, stay safe. Phew.